Howdy, my fellow wood and waters and bug bite victims. Here's a little old update on the progress of this small pocket-sized gasifier project. Since the last time you saw it, I've added a lot of strengthening rails to the chassis. These ones here, for example, and one similar on the other side, are intended to strengthen the original trolley so as to allow it to handle the weight of the engine. In addition to that, I found the need to add these lifting bodies, or lifting jacks, I guess you'd call them. This started out, as did its three little boyfriends, as a standard jockey wheel. Now what I've done is I've cut it apart and blended it into some square section tube then extended its lifting parts so as they emerge through the bottom and also through the part of the jockey wheel that I cut off and then simply blended it to the other end of this square section tube then I put a steel foot on it the idea is that when the whole thing's parked up you can lift it like that at its corners so as to free the wheels. What I'm finding is that the weight of this whole thing is actually squashing the wheels. Even though these wheels are designed to handle a lot of weight and they're the airless sort, I'm having a spot of bother with them deforming, becoming flat on the surface that they're resting on and essentially remembering that flatness thereby distorting the wheel. So with this arrangement I can simply tow this to where it needs to be lift it on its jacks and leave it like that. I guess it would be a bit like a camper van in that regard where you can level it after parking at the campsite. Now to bear the weight of the end join I've added this bottom rail that you see here and added it to a riser made from three pieces, uh, make that two pieces, that connect to the existing trolley frame. So we have the original rail down here that you saw in the last video and this rail on top of it and of course the two are connected by way of the cross members at the front here thereby stiffening the trolley against the weight of the end join. Uh, without these I have this horrible feeling I'd snap in the middle. Hmm. Now I've seen trucks do that not a pretty sight. Looking at the back of the engine here, we see the engine mounts, which are on their own subframe. So down here, you have a subframe that's bolted to the chassis uh, at four points all up. So if I was to drop those bolts, the engine could be lifted out. Also at the back of the engine will be mounted the output shaft. So in the spigot bearing, I'll have it centered, a shaft about 8 inches long and uh, connected of course to these bolts here so as they'll be driven. On that shaft will be placed a couple of really large V-belt pulleys which will couple to a 10 or thereabouts kilowatt gen head situated in this area behind the engine in front of the gasifier. The load imposed by the shaft instead of being coupled back to the uh, frame of the trolley through a bearing will be coupled back to these, the engine mount thereby eliminating any stress from the uh, from leaving the engine basically it will all be contained in the actual mounts thereby relieving the trolley itself of any of the torsional and lateral thrust effects that the engine would impose so I'm hoping that this space here will be sufficient for a 6 to 10 kilowatt gen head. That will come later, about $2,000 from now. Hmm, poor wallet, I knew it well. The uprights that carry the lifting jacks also have become essentially the frame for the radiator. So we have the cross piece here and the radiator essentially sitting behind it. 
the bottom of the radiator sits on a couple of pegs and the top will be set up on some sort of peg that I can remove in order to get the radiator out. Um, you'll notice some rough welds. Uh, this whole thing is sort of tacked together at the moment. The idea being to get the structure of it right before then taking the whole jolly thing to pieces and bits in order to go over every weld and make sure it's absolutely pristine before I put this back together and set it in motion. On the back, I mean the, the front of the engine, we have another engine mount, once again mounted on an independent rail. So you undo the bolts and that's free to come up away with the engine when it's lifted on its hooks. And to do that, I have that chain block there that's rated at, I think, one ton or one and a half tons, maybe. It does very well, that shifting and lifting. It actually lifted the top off my wallet so I could afford some of the steel for this project. <laughs> Okie donkey. Now, around here, we have a potential pincher zone. You could imagine when the engine is running, some city booger sticks his finger in here, it comes off as it gets minced in the space between these. Now, uh, as a proud member of the 10 on 2 club, I'm thinking, well, I need to put something there to keep my fingers from getting minced off by that. Because I like fingers. They're good. Things that have been cut off, though, is the wiring. Uh, this thing was festooned with prodigious amounts of wiring. Some of that is lying down here. That's right, I gave the engine a haircut. This is the time of the year to do haircuts. So that's some of it, and the rest of it's just lying around here and there. What that does, of course, is allows me better access to the parts that are on the engine so I can get them working for me. This distributor has its own ignition device in it and uh, it has something like 9 or 10 wires coming out on these plugs. So I have a choice here. I can either figure out how this thing works and then simply integrate some electronics with it to make it actually serve for this engine or I can simply pull it to bits and make up uh, an optical or other ignition system like I did for my large, my other large gasifier project that had an engine in it. That was very successful. It worked like a charm and um, I'm thinking, yeah, if I can't figure this thing out, then I'll just make my own version of an ignition control computer and Bob's your uncle or your brother or whatever. So, on the simple side of things, the engine has a pretty standard um, throttle body here what looks like an electronic or mechanical electric choke thing up here. I'm assuming that's what that is. A throttle position sensor here. Um, and a throttle return switch there. Click, click, click. You can actually hear it click. Um, over here we have some, um, what we'll call those things, injectors. And maybe I could put those to use after designing a computer for this thing to allow it to become a dual fuel arrangement thereby allowing it to start in dinosaur squeezings and warm up while the gasifier is warming up um, in order to ease the starting process. Talking of warming up, when the engine does get too hot this fan can be used to mm, mitigate the overall heating effect. So that's the front of things dealt with down at the back here, I'm thinking of using another car part down here. Apparently this is an ejector port. So you'd put an, inject an ejector here and use an air compressor, perhaps bigger than that one, to drive it in order to start the uh, gasifier. But I'm thinking that I'd be better off to put um, an electronic or an electric um, turbocharger on here. So you can imagine the turbocharger being positioned there, 
connected to an ejector which then sucks the gas out of the gasifier and starts it. That way you've got something that can be worked off 12 volts. Some of those are 12 volt rated and something like 400 watts or whatever. So I'm thinking that could be connected to the ejector which then blasts the flame out the back of the gasifier trolley in order to push it along. Either that or to start the gasifier. I'll work that out as I get there, I suppose. Uh, was it meant to be there? Hmm. Well, you know what I mean. <laughs> the idea holds, regardless. Talking of lifters, which we weren't, here's another one. The ones at the back were essentially unmodified. All I did with them was cut the wheels off and tack on a steel plate there. That's about three-eighths of an inch thick. The idea being to spread the load and, uh, and stop this thing from sinking into any ground wetness issues. That may be the problem. So if I give this a little bit of a wind and kick the tyre, you can see that it makes it easy to change the wheels on the side of the motorway. So when I've been hooning up and down the motorway, scaring other cars away with this and I get a flatty changing the tires easy piece of Japanesey <laughs> yep so that's pretty much the state of progress at the moment these very very rough welds that you see here will essentially be trimmed and tidied the gaps where welding hasn't occurred will be filled and I'm thinking I'll probably put a plate on top of this, simply to pretty it up uh, during the final uh, welding process. Then uh, perhaps a trip to McDonald's to get some drinking straws to put between here and here in order to complete the plumbing. And I can put some milkshake or some other delicious goodness in there and that will keep the grunter from getting a sweat on. <laughs> so, um, I think the, the last consideration that I may have already mentioned in the previous video is uh, down here, I plan to put a really big battery, at least uh, 120 amp hour deep cycle, somewhere around here maybe, or even above the battery, a really large inverter. So I can get at least 1500 watts of electricity out of it. And of course, the alternator down here, which is typical in a car engine, can be used to keep the battery topped up and allow me to have a local uh, supply of electricity, which may end up being used on the starting system that goes either there or there once I figure this out. So, um, I think that pretty much covers the state of progress for the time being. Um, I'm hoping to, in the not too distant future, finish off the framework, get the engine 100% secured and plumbed up, and um, get the gasifier warmed up for the first time ever. I think though that before I do that, I'm going to take this gasifier to bits and pieces, and show everyone what's inside. I bet you're all itching to see what the wood gas bugs have done in there. Hmm, yeah. Well, I know I am. <laughs> it's shiny, you know. Okay, my good friends, my fellow addicts of many nips. Here's hoping you enjoyed your little old update on the progress of the Gasomatics 9001. Ciao for now.